So I came across this article on Business Insider that I thought was worth sharing with you guys because I feel like a lot of people are in the same situation as this girl. And it says, I moved from New York to Denver six months ago and I made a ton of new friends, but I still feel lonely. And I think that a lot of people out there probably feel lonely no matter how many people they're surrounded by. So I just want to read this to you and then maybe we'll have a little talk and whatnot. So it says, in March, I decided to leave the familiar hustle and bustle of Brooklyn and hit the road in search of my new home. My drive across the country landed me in Denver while I fell in love with the sun setting over the mountains and the wide open streets free of mysterious smells and rat corpses. Well, if you've ever been to New York, that's pretty much an accurate description. The weird smells and the dead rats. It, I've been there and it was very disturbing. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it says the comfort of friends, family, and even my partner were still on the East Coast. I didn't have a single close friend or support system within a thousand miles. Having just turned 30, I found that making friends as an adult can be difficult. Everyone settled in their circle, usually a smattering of friends from childhood, college, and work. So when I got to Denver, I thought it'd be difficult to find a friend group. It was easier than I expected, but I still feel lonely. Based on people I've met, the average time someone's been here is about two years. People in the city seem to remember what it's like to be new, to not know anyone, and to wonder where you belong. As a result, I've done a social activity in Denver without walking away with about five new friends, uh, several phone numbers, and plans for the next three weeks. No, as a result, I've never done a social activity in Denver. <laughs> I read that wrong. That one word is very important. As a result, I've never done a social activity in Denver without walking away without, with about five new friends, several phone numbers, and plans for the next three weeks. The warmth of the people here exceeded my wildest imagination. When I'd meet someone new back in New York, they'd say, hope to see you around with the mutual understanding that you'd never see each other again. In Denver, when you meet someone, they'll say, you're so awesome. Can I have your number so we can hang out? I'm actually having my bridal shower next week and I'd love for you to come. This isn't an exaggeration. This happened to me. So I moved to a new state and within two weeks, I had a full social calendar. Through the lens of group pics and Instagram stories, I'm living the dream. But so much more is happening beneath the surface. I've realized that companionship isn't about being in a room full of people or having plans every day. It's about feeling seen and understood. It's about feeling like you have people who truly care, who will prioritize your needs and who can, you can be your whole self with. Denver's friendliness and inclusive, I can not say this word, Denver's friendliness and inclusivity mean that if you invite someone to hang out, they'll also invite someone to join who will invite someone else to join and so on. This leads to dinner reservations for tables of eight and house parties where you say hello to 50 people, but end up not having a single meaningful conversation. Encounter center on superficial topic like weekend trips, who's dating whom, and the previous night's debauchery. While everyone I meet is fun and warm, I'm struggling to find deeper one-on-one -on -one connections. I want to hear about how you grew up, about your family's dynamic, what you're struggling with, and what lights you up in life. I want to create a safe space for true vulnerability and honesty. It's this level of connection that allows you to turn your friend, turn to your friend when a party sucks and say, let's get out of here. It's what allows you to respond truthfully when you're not okay when your friend asks how you're doing. I have a finite amount of energy to give. I want to make sure I'm investing in people I foresee being long-term friends. So when a new friend I want to get closer to extends my invitation to hang out to others, I ask at this time it just be the two of us. Instead of sticking with standard conversation topics, I, I share when I'm not okay and ask for the same vulnerability in return. When I think about my close friends so many miles away, I realize the common denominator is time spent together. It takes time to break down people's walls, to build trust, and to get to know someone to decide whether you want them in your life long term. The best part about Denver is getting to know people happens on ski slopes and mountain trails, paddle boards, and brewery rooftops. It's a city alive with things to do and ways to connect outside restaurants and bars. I'm optimistic this will help me form deeper, authentic connections based on mutual interests and new adventures. Listen, I'm not 30, right? I'm almost 42, and even I feel lonely sometimes. It's very hard to make friends, and I feel like it's harder the older that you get. Um, I thought I'd made some friends here in Florida once we moved, but then those married friends started having marital problems and there went our friends. Uh, it wasn't any deeper than 
surface it seems and that sucked i expected them to be lifelong friends and that did not work out the way i had hoped for and so then it makes you a little skittish when it comes to trying to find new friends especially because everybody is so busy these days especially as you get older you have careers you have families you have things you're already invested in and when somebody new comes along it's hard to take away some time to give to a new person, especially if it's time you're taking away from yourself or from your family, right? And so I feel like people who have been able to stay friends with friends from childhood, from school, from college, those people are luckier than they realize because they made friends, lifelong friends, before life really got in the way and really um, took up most of the time to where friendship making became more of a back burner kind of thing. And even with people you've known for a long time, of course, you're still going to have superficial um like conversations, that's totally fine and totally normal. How's the weather? What, what'd you have for lunch? Blah, blah, blah. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's also really nice to have somebody you can turn to and say, Hey, I'm not feeling okay today. I don't know what it is. My brain just, it's sad or it's mad or it's uh, upset. It's whatever. And you can have somebody to have those conversations with. And I know people will say, well, you have your spouse, you have your family, but it's not the same. Sometimes you want to have a conversation about something that you don't want to have with your spouse about how you're feeling unattractive or how you're feeling overwhelmed or whatever else. And you just want another female that you can kind of lean on or let it out to who has been in the same situation or is in the same situation and can understand where you're coming from. And you don't want to, you know, do that to have that conversation with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, because you're going to get that suck it up buttercup response a lot of the times from family, right? So uh, it's really hard to be a person without a really, really close friend to have those conversations with. And I haven't had a really, really close friend um, probably since before the pandemic. And it sucks that the pandemic for a lot of people took away those close connections that they had when everything kind of shut down for a while and people stayed home and stopped going out and meeting new people. It also hurt those relationships that were already existing in a lot of spaces where you didn't go to work anymore. So there goes your work friend, the one person you could talk to about stuff, or there goes your gym partner, the person you would hang out with at the gym and now you don't talk to them anymore. Or the other mom that you would see on, you know, play dates for the kids because those have gone away. And then once everything opened back up again, people People had already kind of gotten used to just holding everything in, not really going out anywhere. And I think that a lot more people are lonely today than they were in 2019, but I don't know how many people really talk about it. Like I'm lonely some days and not because I don't love my husband and my child and we talk about everything all the time, but sometimes I want that female, female hangout time. I want to go get my nails done with somebody. I want to shoot the shit over coffee or a mimosa with another female and talk about, you know, random girl stuff that a guy just isn't really going to understand. And it sucks that it gets, it feels like it gets harder and harder the older you get and the more life you have around you. Again, job, kids, whatever else. And then heaven forbid you have numerous kids and you have a big family and you have more than one job or you're taking care of a, like whole big things. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's more people out there that maybe don't even realize that they're lonely. Like they know there's something, but they can't figure out what it is. And it's because they're lonely. They need somebody to talk to. So I'll just put it out there. If y'all need somebody to talk to, <laughs> I'll talk back. Like I like having conversations with people and I think it's good to have somebody who is blunt and honest and open and doesn't judge. So if you need that person, uh, I'll be here for you. Um, I just think that a lot of people probably need more than they realize when it comes to emotional support um, outside of your regular everyday life. And there's nothing wrong with that at all, needing or wanting somebody else to talk to or friends or whatever else. You can be best friends with your spouse, with your, with your child, with your whatever, but everybody still needs somebody of the same sex that they can have those conversations with. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my thought. Hopefully this girl that has moved from New York to Denver can find something deeper within all of the friendships that she has made. I do think it's great to go out and do something different. And I've always been a 
believer of if you want to meet somebody who's like-minded, go to the places you enjoy hanging out. If you don't really like drinking, why would you go to a bar to meet somebody? If you don't like sports, why are you at a sporting event hoping to meet somebody? If you like dogs and your dog is your most important thing in your life, hang out in the dog park. I'm sure you'll meet somebody else who feels the same way you do about dogs or, or whatever else. If you like books and you'd rather how, you know, talk to somebody about what they read yesterday, hang out at the bookstore, the library, something like that. If you love the favorite, your favorite thing in the world is coffee and just chilling, go to a coffee shop and hang out. I can guarantee you there will be people in there. But the thing is you also have to be able and willing and open to stepping out of your comfort zone and just randomly saying hi to strangers, which is so incredibly difficult for a lot of people. But if you see an opening, take it. If you're somewhere and you see somebody reading a book that you've read or you want to read, there's your shot. Oh man, I loved that book. What do you think so far? Oh man, I've been dying to read that book. What do you think so far? It's really easy to have those super simple opening lines. You just have to be willing to Breathe in, count to three, five, ten, whatever works for you, and just go for it. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully everybody out there has somebody, but if you don't, hopefully you're okay. And if you're not okay, hopefully you have a way to make yourself feel better. Somebody like a therapist or, you know, um, the ability to go out and try to find somebody else to talk to, new friends, whatever else. So I just read this and I thought it was interesting given the fact that most people don't stop and think about the fact that they're lonely or they miss having somebody to talk to about random things or they're looking for that deeper connection outside of just the fluffy, you know, top soiled kind of topic, right? Um, yeah, that's all I got about that. So thank you guys for letting me kind of whatever this was. I appreciate it. I just wanted to, I just wanted to have this conversation. And since you guys are here for me, I wanted to have it with you. So I appreciate you immensely and I'll see you later. Bye.